Carbon fiber construction has become almost universal in high-performance sailing, and it's easy to understand why, as its incredible strength, stiffness, and light weight have enabled boats like this Imoca 60 to sail more than 600 nautical miles, or 1,100 kilometers, in 24 hours. In the past, this kind of performance was only possible with much larger monohulls or multi-hulls. Given this, it's not surprising to see carbon fiber construction making its way into production boats, and two of the most watched sailing channels, Sailing La Vagabond and Gone with the Winds, have both taken delivery of all carbon cruising boats in the last year or so. But while carbon fiber construction is not only appropriate, but almost necessary in high-performance racing boats, it does have a number of dark secrets which cause me to question whether it really belongs in cruising boats, as the winds have come to discover as they encounter a myriad of issues with their new boat. Carbon fiber is about five times lighter than steel, 50% lighter than aluminum, and 30% lighter than glass fiber. And because it is so strong, you can get away with using much less of it. And this weight savings has a dramatic effect on sailing performance. Riley seems to understand the impact of weight on boat performance as well, to the point that he had his family and crew begrudgingly empty their entire boat to have it weighed, and was very selective about what they brought back on board. But when you add the weight of all your earthly possessions, you seriously blunt the performance benefits and still have to deal with all of the drawbacks. Carbon fiber costs 10 to 15 times more than glass, it emits 15 to 20 times more CO2 during production, and it requires highly skilled labor to build and repair. In addition to being 30% lighter than glass fibers, carbon saves even more weight by using less cloth and resin than fiberglass, so the layup of materials needs to be done to a very high standard and is less forgiving of errors in workmanship, as Riley and Elena found with this crack in their boat. The winds also experienced firsthand how errors in workmanship could lead to significant galvanic corrosion of their engine anodes, propellers, deck hardware, and even their anchor and chain. Stray current due to wiring errors can cause rapid corrosion of propellers and shafts on any boat, especially if you're plugged into shore power in a marina, and it could even be your neighbor's boat that's the problem. But such extensive corrosion of deck fittings, anchors, and chains in only a few months is almost unheard of on fiberglass boats. The problem with carbon is not just that it conducts electricity, but that it does such a good job of attracting the electrons of other metals that it is frequently used in batteries. So when a boat builder drills a hole for a bolt to secure a deck fitting, and a piece of carbon fiber comes in contact with a bolt, you have a battery. And lots of corrosion. A boat builder who is used to fiberglass construction will often remove part of the core and fill it with thickened epoxy like in this diagram. This is enough to keep the bolt from crushing the core on a fiberglass boat, but it isn't enough on a carbon fiber boat. This is because the bolt can still come in contact with the carbon skin, which isn't a problem for fiberglass, but creates a battery with carbon and all the corrosion that goes along with it. The solution is for the builder to ensure that the thickened epoxy extends all the way to the deck surface, so the carbon doesn't come in contact with any other metals. For every single fitting on the boat, this is such a pain that many carbon boat builders use integral composite fittings to avoid metal altogether or carbon and Dyneema soft pad eyes that are stronger than steel and also contain no metal. Because carbon fiber is incredibly stiff, carbon boats are also more brittle than boats made with fiberglass, as Alex Thompson learned when he encountered structural damage in the 2020 Vendee Globe race. By comparison, fiberglass is much more elastic and can deform twice as far and rebound back to its original shape without breaking, which is another negative for cruising when the world's oceans are littered with hull-crushing debris. And if you still think you can sleep soundly on a carbon cruising boat, just know that all that carbon stiffness is incredibly good at transmitting every single sound throughout the boat. So as cool as these carbon cruising boats are, I think I prefer to keep carbon for racing and use fiberglass for cruising, except for maybe a few key areas requiring extra stiffness. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to leave a like, subscribe, and watch this next video.